Our text is indeed two messages in one. And I struggle with which way the Lord would have me to come. Because those of us who will recognize that we are brands plucked out of the fire will also recognize that there is a proper and expected response for having been plucked out of the fire. There's a response, Brother Sawyer, to this privilege of having been plucked out, that is, delivered out of the fire. And that if we've been plucked out of the fire, it behooves us to take advantage of our plucked out of the fire status. Hallelujah. God has plucked us out for a reason. Amen. For his purpose and for his glory. We're, we're not plucked out just to be plucked out. All right. Glory to God. We're not plucked out to be uh, spectators, to be sideline people. We're plucked out with a purpose. God saved us with a purpose in mind. Now let's let's look at this for a few minutes and. If you pray for me, I won't be very long. Keep in mind that in our text, God gave the prophet Zechariah eight visions in one night. Every time I realize this, I say to myself, oh, what a night. Eight visions in one night, according to chapter 1. In verse 7, it says, Upon the four and twentieth day of the eleventh month, which is the month Sabbat, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah. February the 24th, the second year of Darius, king of Persia. That night, God visited the prophet Zechariah. The first vision, verse 8 says, I saw by night. The second vision is recorded in verse 18. It says, Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw. The third vision is in chapter 2, verse 1. It says, I lifted up mine eyes again. And the fourth vision is our text. And he showed me Joshua. It was like a, a movie. Going from one show to the next. And as soon as he could write down or make a record of what he had just seen. Maybe trying to doze off to sleep. God shows him another one. Can I get a witness? Joshua. In our text, we see verse 1. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. As you know, the angel of the Lord, that is a, uh, a theological term. It literally means he was standing before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We see Joshua, the high priest, standing before the Lord. There were four different people mentioned in the Old Testament named Joshua. But this Joshua was the first 
priests after the exile. Mentioned numerous times in the book of Ezra, Nehemiah, and Haggai mentions Joshua. Amen. This is the Joshua who with Zerubbabel, um, a part of the first group of people to leave Babylon, to go back down to Israel, to Jerusalem, to rebuild. Joshua here is pictured as the priesthood. And he's a representative of the nation of Israel. Let that sink in. He represents the priesthood. And he represents the nation of Israel. That is all of the returnees. He was a type for everyone. So Joshua here is representative, first of all, of himself as a human being. The priesthood. And the nation of Israel, all of the returnees, and for the purposes of understanding what God is saying to us, I am Joshua. You are Joshua. This church is Joshua. Our nation is Joshua. Where did we find Joshua? We find Joshua in this vision standing before the Lord. Standing before the Lord is a technical term or designation for the priestly ministry. The priests stood before the Lord in the temple. So then since we see him standing before the Lord, then the vision took place in the temple. Glory to God. The temple was not at this time fully rebuilt. But he sees Joshua standing before the Lord in the completed temple. And notice in our text it says, as Joshua stood before the Lord, the angel of the Lord, guess who else was there? Satan was there. Now, the Bible says that Satan was there uh, standing at his right side. See, the right side uh, was the place of accusation under the law. An accuser could go into the temple and make his case against someone. And accused them. He had to stand on the right side. And indict them. So we're in the temple. And we see a former charge. An indictment. Uh, being made by Satan. In the temple. Against Joshua. Who represents the priesthood. Who represents himself. Who represents you. Who represents me. Who represents the church. Who represents our nation. So now we see the devil on his right side. Psalms 109 and, and, and verse 6 speaks to this says, set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. See, that's, that's where you stand to indict. So Satan here is standing, and he's bringing a case to God against Joshua. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. At his right side. And he's there to resist Joshua. That is to resist you. To resist me. The church. 
our nation, Joshua as a person, the priesthood, and all of the returnees. The word Satan in the Hebrew literally means adversary. He had access to the court courtroom of God in the temple. And here we see him functioning as a prosecutor. I'm glad that the day will come. It's, it's not yet, but the day will come when the devil will lose access to heaven. Job tells us that when the sons of God came before the Lord, Satan came with them. Jesus tells us, uh, he speaks to Simon. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has sought and obtained permission to sift you like wheat. Oh, but there is a day coming. Revelations chapter 12. And remember, the book of Revelations is the history of the future. In chapter 12, it gives the record, this hasn't happened yet, of the final excursion, the final exclusion of Satan from heaven. This is not when the devil was originally cast out. But this is when he will be cast out and never allowed to enter God's temple again. Verse 7 says, and there was war in heaven. Remember, you're reading the history of the future. The God of the Bible is the only one who calleth the things that be not as though they were. He speak of future events in the past tense. Talks about things that are yet to happen as though they have already happened. And so the text says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels was cast out with him. And when he, and, and in being excluded from heaven, the devil will get angry and he will become more vicious. And it says, I heard a, a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Thank God those of us who are saved now will, will, will be caught up in the rapture and we won't be here when the devil is cast out of heaven and never given access again and he and his entire kingdom is cast down here. Many saints will be destroyed. Many who will believe then will lose their lives for the text says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, but they love not their lives unto death are you following me so we see back in Joshua here in Zechariah the devil Satan standing before Joshua and he's standing there uh, to the text says resist him the word resist is to slander to accuse him and the attitude was of a negative bias. The devil was angry with, with, with uh, Joshua uh, even before he had anything to be angry about with him for. He had a negative bias against him. He hated Joshua. Uh, that is, 
He hated you. He hates me. He hates the church. He hates our nation. He hated that individual. He hated the priesthood and all of the returnees. Even all of Israel, Satan hated. And the devil had a conviction and was looking for a crime. And he stood before God and laid out his case against Joshua. Can I get a witness? He made great accusations. Against Joshua. He, can you see him as a prosecutor? Laying out all of the wrong that Joshua, you, me, hallelujah, our church, the priesthood, the returnees that all of us have done. He was there to make sure he made the case. And in our text, after he finished making his case, after Satan, the adversary, after Satan, Joshua's opponent, made his case, the Lord, being the judge now, verse 2 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Not, the Lord said unto Joshua. Hallelujah. Satan with all of his high class lawyers showed up with a watertight case. They knew that there would be no defense that Joshua uh could give. Praise the Lord. And yet, God didn't ask Joshua a thing. He answered Satan. Isn't that something? The text says, And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee. Good God Almighty. The Lord rebuked thee. See, see, Paul hadn't come along yet and wrote Romans 8 and 33, but God knew what 8 and 33 would say even back then. Romans 8 and 33 says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Said the Lord rebuke thee. Good God Almighty. Rebuke. To rebuke means to speak harshly. To rebuke means to check. God checked him right there and then the text says the Lord rebuke thee O Satan O Satan is translated Satan that is we see God raising his voice adding emphasis to shut this big mouth persecutor down The Lord said, Satan, the Lord rebuked thee, Satan. Joshua was standing there not saying a word. Can I get a witness? Satan, even the Lord that have chosen Jerusalem, rebuked thee. Oh my, the Lord that have chosen Jerusalem, Rebuke thee. This shows God's divine choice, God's divine prerogative, and and the and the Lord chose Jerusalem. And you know what Jerusalem is? You, who will perhaps to explain what that phrase means? The Lord chose Jerusalem. I told you, Joshua is a type for all Israel. Joshua is a type for Jerusalem, Judah, all the returnees, and the place that they had returned back to. God said, I chose them. I chose them. This is my choice. And, uh, and you have, you, in, in coming and bringing charges against my choice, you're bringing charges against me. And he said, the Lord rebuke thee. 
He had already told him in chapter, chapter 2 that we're the apple of his eye. And he already said, he that toucheth you touches me. Bible says in Zechariah 2 and 8, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, After the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you, the nations that took advantage of you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of my eye. And here's the devil coming to condemn Joshua, and he's condemning the pupil. Good God Almighty, the most delicate part of God's eye. Can I get a witness? The apple of the eye is the most vital part of the eye. The most sensitive part of the eye. And the Lord was saying to Satan, who do you think you are? Coming in my courts. Bringing this accusation against my servant. God Almighty. And then... Praise the Lord. God asked the question of our text. I call it the big question. He says concerning Joshua, uh, who are the type for you and me, our church, our nation, the man himself, the priesthood, and all of the returnees. God says, it's not this a brain plucked out of the fire. Yes, sir. What is a brand, Bishop? The brand is a piece of kindling. Brand is a piece of firewood. Piece of wood. Good God Almighty, use to start fires. God says, is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Hallelujah. Brand is used here. God says, yes, uh, Joshua was on fire. This wood was about to be consumed, but I pulled it out of the fire. Conversely, it is a piece of wood consumed, uh, a piece of wood barely burning. The flame is about to go out. And it is rescued and set ablaze. Two different metaphors, which means the same thing, depending upon where you are in your life. You see, how many of us almost got burned up? Was almost consumed in sin. The devil had you going down for the last time. And Jesus plucked you out of the fire. Got you out of the nightclub. Got you out of the whorehouse. Got you out of sin. Got you out of the liquor store. Thank you. Pull them cigarettes away from you. Took cussing from you. Pull you out of adultery. Pull you out of homosexuality and lesbianism. Pulled you out of the abortion industry. Pulled you out of sin. I believe tonight, today there are some brands in here who have been plucked out of the fire. Bring me up just a little bit. Hallelujah. Do I have any brand status? Do I have any folk here with brand status who can say, Preacher, he saved me on time? Hallelujah. I was, I was on my way to, uh, to hell. Praise the Lord. I was out, but the Lord rescued me. And then for the other metaphor, that is the, the piece of wood that is barely burning, that's almost lost its flame. How many of you, since you've been saved, since you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, how many would be honest and say, there was a time when my fire almost went out. There have been times when life has gotten so hard that I didn't think I could make it. There were times when the burdens got so heavy that I didn't think I could take it. But the Lord came in. He sent a word and he revived my soul again. That is, I'm a brand plucked out of the fire. Let me hear the brands. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Going down for the count. But he brought me out in trouble. 
but he brought me out. And so he told the devil, he said he's a brand plucked out of the fire. Now, 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 can I get somebody to say now, 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 concerning the devil's case. You're not gonna shout today, but concerning the devil's case, this time, oh Lord, it makes me love the Lord more. It makes me love the Lord more. It makes me love the Lord more. Yes, I love God more. Uh huh. I love God because the truth is, this time the devil was not lying. Everything he said bad about Joshua, everything he said bad about the priesthood, everything he said bad about the returnees, everything that he said bad about you, and that he said bad about me, and that he said bad about the church, according to the text, this prosecutor was not lying. Joshua was guilty as charge. I know there are some of us who never made a mistake. I know there are some of us who never dropped a ball. But there are people in here who can say that the Lord rescued me when I didn't deserve it. He still brought me out when I was in trouble. Oh, he had mercy on me. Good God Almighty, look at Joshua. The text says, now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Let me tell you what that means. It literally means that his clothes was covered with excrement. His clothes was filthy with refuge. Lord have mercy from the, from the top of his garment all the way down. He was a miserable uh, wretch. He was a mess. He stood there with the stench of sin all over him. But I, the thing I love about God, even though this was not Joshua's prettiest picture, God still chose him. God still brought him out. Do I have anybody here who say I wouldn't have been the one that the community would have chosen? I wouldn't have been the one that they would have voted most likely to succeed. But he loved me anyway. He picked me up anyhow. Yeah! I was stained with sin, but he got me out. There is Joshua, dirty and filthy. And God looks at him after he rebuked the devil. The Lord looked at him with his dirty clothes as he stood before the Lord. And uh, he answered and spake. He spake unto him. He spake unto those that stood before him. He said, take away his filthy garments. Hallelujah. And said unto him, behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. Thank you, Jesus, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. I wonder, do I have anybody here who know that when you got saved, the Lord took away your filthy garment. The Holy Ghost began to tug at your heart. God got our, he got our attention. You see, we say that we came to Jesus as we were. That's partly true. He lured us. Yes, we came, but he lured us. He extended the invitation. He extended the olive branch. The Holy Ghost began to work on our hearts long before we gave in to Jesus. The Holy Ghost worked on us and we finally got saved. We came down the aisle just as we were, wearied, wounded, and sad. But we found in him a resting place, and he made us glad. Do I have any glad brands in here who've been plucked out of the fire? Woo, Lord, 
good God Almighty, look at what God did. He changed his clothes. He took away the filthy garments. He took away his sin and put clean clothes on. Do I have anybody here who can say he took away my sin? He changed my life. He changed my heart. He changed my mind. He changed my attitude. Jesus did it. I couldn't do it for myself. I was dirty and I had no soap. I was filthy and I had no clothes. My garments were dirty, but I had nothing else to put on. But the Lord looked at me and he had mercy on me and he cleaned me up. The stench is gone. He cleaned me up. My robe fits me well. He cleaned me up. He didn't just clean me up, but he gave me authority. He put me in the place. He made me a priest for real. He put a turban on my head. He decked him out as a priest. Look at the priest in here. Somebody ought to thank the Lord. Thank him for your deliverance. Thank him for your blessings. Thank him for what he's done. Thank you. Oh, you're not glad that he cleaned you up? He cleaned me up. Ah, guilty. Guilty is charged. But the Lord had mercy on me. Ah, the Lord revived my soul. Yes, sir. Somebody praise him in the room. Cleaned him up. Cleaned him up. Cleaned him up. And then Jesus said to him, he said, now I put a turban on your head. I've cleaned you up. Now I want to charge you. I want to charge you. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou will walk in my ways, and if thou will keep my charge, then shall thou judge my house. Other words, since I cleaned you up, since I took away your sin, since I rebuked the devil, since I kept you from being made ashamed, you ought to take advantage of what I've done for you. Since I spared you and didn't let you get killed in sin, since I brought you out, my Lord, you ought to praise him. We ought to serve him. We ought to run for him as never before. I thank God for a new lease on life. I thank Jesus for saving my soul. And when I think of where he's brought me from, it makes me wanna preach that much harder. It makes me wanna serve him that much more because it could have been the other way. But the Lord has been good to us all. The Lord has had mercy on us all. We're all brands plucked out of the fire. Now, oh, upper room, take advantage of this time to seek the Lord. Take advantage of this time to get your blessing. Take advantage of this time while the Lord has opened doors and made ways say yeah 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 I heard the old church say it like this and if anybody asks you What's the matter with me? Oh, oh, tell him I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, and I've got Jesus on my side, and I'm running. Oh, you 
Preach so hard. Look where he brought me from. somebody by the hand and just tell them look where, look where. me brought me from mm -hmm. look where he brought me from brought me out of darkness oh, I was walking in now I'm walking in the light oh, look where Ah, look where, way back yonder, look where he brought me from. I got to praise his name, cause I'm a brand plucked out the fire. I got to hit the ground running, I got to keep on going. I wonder if anybody here, uh, forget that stuff, it's so hard to stay saved. So hard to live holy in the church. So hard. It's so hard. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Let him revive you. Let him revive you. Let him revive you. When you realize, when you realize, when it dawned on us, our brand plucked out status. That changes everything because you realize you're privileged. Privileged to be saved. Privilege. Privilege. You don't have to be healed. He didn't have to heal you. He didn't have to take care of that cancer. He didn't have to make that way. He didn't have to open that door. And he had good reasons not to. And when the, when the accuser of the brethren came before the Lord, he had a good case against us all. A good case. I mean, he just, this, 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 this. I know we testify, we've never done wrong, but let the devil tell it. Because he was there every time. He saw the whole thing and him and his demons. But when the Lord has chosen you, God's choice trumps everything, everything. And then when you become a believer who recognizes that God made choice of you and then you act according to your will, you know what you do? You move into the realm of the supernatural. He said right here, if you would just do this, if you will uh, keep my charge, then thou shalt judge my house. Look at that. I'll, I'll elevate you, priest. You'll govern the house. Look at the work. You see, God's, God's reward is work. Our reward is no work. See, that's, that's what we work for. We work to not work. God rewards us with work. Says, if you walk in my way, then thou shalt judge my house. And thou shalt keep my courts. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. The these that were standing by were the angels. I'll give you authority with the angels. I set you free. I rebuke the devil. I changed your clothes. I took away your sin. Now if you obey me, if you obey me, I'll give you power to walk with angels. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to pray for those today who will say, Preacher, I am a brand. 
plucked out of the fire. And I want to take advantage. I, I have not done a good job of late taking advantage of my status. I, I, I've, I've let the devil reduce me in many ways to just being a spectator. I, when, when I get to church, I'm late. I used to be in the thick of things, but I'm not. I used to be interested in the thick of things, but I'm not. I'm not serving him as I ought. I'm not. He's been too good to me. He's done so much for me. And I think that I need, hallelujah, to take advantage, to hit the ground running. The Bible says redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. Redeem means to make full use of the times. I want to make full use of the time that I have left. Hallelujah. God, I've spent too much time stuck in one place. I want you to move on me now. Because that's what you want to do. Hallelujah. He rebuked Satan. Let him have silenced that prosecutor. And said, I've made choice of him. And the thing about God is when the Lord chooses you, then God qualifies you. See, God doesn't always choose to qualify. He qualifies who he chooses. His chosen. If he makes, if he makes choice of you, you might not be able to a talking to him. But if he calls you, he'll qualify you to do it. So you can't, can't even, you can't hardly read. He'll call you and make you the best preacher in the house. Now, God, you'll get up and have better diction than a scholar because he knows how to qualify you once he's called you. See, and that's why some of us miss it with the Lord because we come before God and we offer him our qualifications. He turns all of them down. Say, I don't need that. I don't need that. Matter of fact, I want to separate you from your qualifications. I'm going to put you on the backside of the desert for 40 years. Now, once you've forgotten all that, I'll come back and get you. 40 years later, a bush started burning that would not burn up. God came back and got it. So now come on, Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. So now I got you where you'll listen to me. See, uh, 40 years prior, you killed the Egyptian. See, you responded. I need you to lay all of your achievements at the altar. Lay all that stuff down. A preacher once said to me, and that brother really, it, it, what I told him, got through to him. He said to me for years ago, when we were in greater North Carolina, he said to me, he addressed me and he said, wouldn't, if I was Bishop Woolard and I had someone in my jurisdiction whose ministry is similar to mine, if I were him, I would reach out to me and would pull that person in and work them more, and take advantage of that person. I said to him, if I was that person and Bishop Woolard was my bishop and my church was similar to yours, I would reach out to him. I'd reach out to the bishop. And I would get close to him. I wouldn't expect him to adjust to me. I would adjust to him. See, that's the way God works. See, you, you, can't, you can't stand back with God and hold up your trophies and say, now come and use me. He won't until you put them trophies down. And then say, okay, 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 I'm nothing. What'd you say? I'm nothing. Now he's ready 
to use you, your natural talents, gifts, abilities, and everything else. But until you, I don't know why I'm saying this, stop with your self-qualifying. Now, ain't nobody call me with your self-qualifying. And, uh, well, I can do it. I'm this, I'm that. As long as you talk like that, you're not ready for God. You know what Joshua said when he was being accused? Nothing. Nothing, not a word. Joshua didn't rebuke the devil. Joshua kept his mouth shut. But there was nothing for him to say because he was guilty. But the Lord had mercy. Plucked him out of the fire, but then charged him. So you, is everybody on the altar? Who, who, is, is there anybody on the altar who is not saved? Raise your hand. So if all of you are born again, that means everybody on the altar has been plucked out of the fire. Amen. Amen. Plucked out of, out of the fire. E either you were in sin and the Lord brought you out. Or your flame was about to go out. And he revived you again. Then what we're praying for today. Is for the Lord to revive. And for us to respond properly. See when the Lord saves you. One of the things that keep your salvation vibrant is how you respond to salvation. The Lord save you and bring you out, set you free. You don't respond to that by coming to church when you get ready, if you get ready, whatever time you get ready. You don't respond by getting around to studying the Bible when you have nothing else to do. You worked all day, watched all of your favorite afternoon movies, and shows and then you get to God. That's not the way to respond. You don't respond by giving God what you have left. You done paid your bills, you done paid the movie, you done paid the mall, you done paid everybody and then what's left, you give that to God. That's not the way you respond to the Lord for saving you and bringing you out. To what keeps you revived is the response. When God gets the wrong re response, one of the things the Lord begins to do is to withdraw. See, the context of I swore in my wrath that these are people that do error in their hearts. They have not known my ways. Is that I have shown them, I've given them reasons to believe and they wouldn't do it. God has been good to us. I'm going to pray for you, but I want you to hear what I just said because your anointing and the Lord drawing near is tied to how we respond to him for what he's already done. If you have a child who will accept a gift and thank you like you gave them the world, you always want to give them something. Right. And if you got one that won't hardly thank you at all, you don't ever want to give them anything. There's something about it. Some people you help, oh, they, they almost embarrass you. They thank you so much for helping them. Some people you help, they treat it like it's an, an entitlement. There is a proper, a proper and expected response. From the Lord. Lift your hands. Glory to God. Oh God. Oh God. Great God of the Bible. Joshua's God. Lord who rebuked Satan. God who shut him down. Silence that prosecutor. And the day will come that he will lose access to the throne room of God. Thank you for that, Lord. Father, we come before you. And we, we first of all, Lord, we repent. Hallelujah. For dragging our feet. My, 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 my. And Lord, we want to take full advantage 
of our status as brands plucked out of the fire. You didn't have to save us, but you did. You didn't have to deliver us, but you did. You didn't have to make us whole, but you did. So we thank you for this. And we glorify you. And we magnify you, Lord. And today, Lord, on this Sunday, on this Sunday, this, this first Sunday, hallelujah, God, we stand before you. Right now, Lord Jesus, and we declare tonight that we're going to serve you. Going to serve you more. Going to be, praise the Lord, more faithful. We're going to stand with you in the name of Jesus. And we receive whatever blessing that comes along with that. You promised that we could stand before the angels. You promised, oh God, that you would move us in the realm of supernatural things and give us power to promote your kingdom. And Jesus, here we are. First of all, glad that you took away that filthy garment and glad that you covered us with the blood of Jesus and glad that the stench of sin has been removed and glad that we're washed in the blood of the Lamb and glad, oh God, for all that you've done and for every door that you've opened and every way that you've made. And now, Jesus, now, Jesus, hallelujah, have your way, have your way, have your way, Lord, have your way in my mind, have your way in my spirit, I submit myself to you out of gratitude, you know I was guilty, you know the devil, he had me right, he he, true, he tricked me. He tricked me. And then he told on me. But God, you forgave me. And you set me free. You rebuked the devil. And you've given me another chance. And I'm going to hit the ground running for the rest of my days. I'm running for Jesus. And I'm not tired yet. I've been running for Jesus. And I'm not tired yet. No, no. No, Lord, and every time I feel fatigue, I think about what you've done for me and where you brought me from, and it revives my soul again. Jesus, ah! Ah, Jesus, thank you right now. Thank you right now. Thank you right now. Take my hands and you use my hands. Take my feet and you use my feet. Take my voice, take my mind, my whole being, and you use me, Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. commit myself and I recommit myself to you for what you've done for me. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord. In Jesus name. Amen.